about my share my experience with legal education during the two years of the pandemic. I happened to be in the Jammu and Kashmir there, and I happened also to be invited by friends like Ved, by you know Professor Vajpayee. I see Shashi Kalaji is here, and uh, Raj Professor Raj Kumar. So I did several programs with him. And my sense of the anxiety in law students because of the pandemic is like anxiety as not known to a student of any other discipline. They were paranoid about what is going to happen to them when the, when, you know, the lockdowns get over, restrictions ease. And where will they stand? What is the chance? See, we were getting stories about young lawyers suffering so much. You know, there were so many cases of suicides, apart from COVID deaths, but mostly because of the lack of work and the lack of opportunity. And uh, this made me think as to what we I can do. Internships were closed, law researcherships were closed, nobody was permitting access, judges were not permitting access to law students or lawyers. You know, the courts were run, running remotely. So what, what, what internships could the law students do? Law offices were closed. And that is when I honed in on an idea. Now students in the rest of the country get much more opportunity than children from Jammu and Kashmir do for several reasons, which I don't need to get into here. So I, it, it struck me that I should, should start a program of an e-internship for the children of Jammu and Kashmir. Now I had to post this online even to tell those children we were doing that. But what came as a response was overwhelming. It was touching beyond words. I got applications from over 300 students. I, we were only seven judges. And up 267 applications from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, from you know Gujarat, from Kutch to the Myanmar border. There was no university, you know, we were they were whose children, whose students had not applied to us. All the national law universities, Guwahati Law University, Nirma University, symbiosis. We had children who were from every sphere wanting, they were so starved of opportunities, you know. And that is when I realized that how important availability of an opportunity, a meaningful opportunity to children is. Now, 267 children, if it, it would have been about 30, 40, 50 from Kashmir, it was easy to handle. You know, I could have enabled them to come back, access to the judges. You know, they could sit in courtrooms and read files. But I can't send court files or make my, uh, you know, soft copies available to a student sitting in Bangalore or Nadia Kumari or in Guwahati. So I had to think of what to do. Then I reached out, I, we designed a program where we did internships in subject, subjects, you know, specialist, specialities. Now, what was important to law students was, what does law practice mean? What does an internship teach them? It's about how a practice in a particular field evolves. What do you do in a law office? You know, what are the questions which arise? How do you look at a court file? So I started speaking to experts and I got wonderful response, resource persons from the best in the country. My practice in corporate affairs, you know, I had Nishit Desai represented, I had Amar Chand Shroff, senior, senior colleagues from there, lawyers from there appearing, uh, who addressed uh, those panels. I appointed young people who were moderator, young lawyers in the field specialists. The constitutional law panel was uh, done by Mr. Parag Tripathi, Sham Devan, and their wives. Neelima Tripathi was there, and uh, um, Sham's wife was there. You know, so, and uh, the response was overwhelming. So, this, and it was almost a year long program, but it couldn't end at this. The children, the students had still not seen the courts. That's what internships and law researcherships are most about and most precious. Now, I was also, I'm also, Jammu and Kashmir High Court is very start of infrastructure, but they had to see the courts. So then we filmed the courts for them, the trial courts. We did walkthroughs and took children through these walkthroughs. I did interactions with children, all these 267 children from across the country. You know, they still write to me. They want to come and work with me. I don't know what work I can give after I'm retired. But, you know, and I, I was engaging with children in Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh. And uh, I learned a lot from their experiences. But more, so far as this question is concerned, what is, was 
most disconcerting was that we did not do anything for the children. You know, we let them go through this anxiety without even talking to them, you know, maybe counseling them, provide, telling them what we could help them with, what they could do once the restrictions eased. The, you know, they had to know what kind of opportunities are there. You don't only have a law practice, you don't only have to do a corporate law practice. You know, there's so many other fields where a law degree will, specialization in law enables a job opportunity, a livelihood option to you. So my first request, you know, the future of law was never, never dim. Uh, it's the sky is the limit if you got a degree of law. I tell everybody, whether you're an engineer, whether you're a doctor, whether you're a chartered accountant, you must do law. You know, they ask me whatever for. I said, you, I don't know, but it will help you certainly sometime in your life, you know. So, law is the ultimate, you know. It teaches you, you know, it skills you, it equips you for living, and it certainly provides you a law option. And law practice, certainly we must. So, Future of the law of law is not dim. Now, there are law schools mushrooming. We are, you know, we got law graduates by thousands every year, and uh, if, uh, you know, yet courts are still needing. There's room for good lawyers all the time. 